Well, for more on this, we're joined by Dr Mike Galsworthy, an independent consultant and researcher in health innovation policy, co-founder of Scientists for EU, and Yusuf El Gingi, a GP and author of How to Dismantle the NHS in 10 Easy Steps. Uh, doctors, thanks very much for joining us. Um, Yusuf, I wondered if I might start with you. It is a scandal, isn't it, that at a time when the NHS is under incredible financial pressure, people are coming to the United Kingdom uh, wanting free treatment and receiving free treatment. Um, so the first thing we have to do is to unpack what is a loaded uh, term because there is a difference between legitimate health tourism and illegitimate health tourism. Uh, so in terms of people who are deliberately coming uh, and using the NHS when they're not entitled to it, that's actually just a segment or proportion of uh, the total amount that is labelled as health tourism. So health tourism means all kinds of things. So it includes, for example, uh, people who are on holiday in the UK who happen to fall uh, ill in the same way that you or I might fall ill when we're, on, we're abroad. And we have reciprocal arrangements, uh, for example, with countries in the European Economic Area through uh, the European Health Insurance Card Scheme, and even with countries such as Australia. Uh, so it's a two-way process. Health tourism also covers, um, for example, UK expatriates uh, who might come back and use the NHS. It also covers um, EU migrants who uh, are resident in uh, Britain and includes people who have indefinite leave to uh, remain and they're paying national insurance and taxes. So we have to be very careful with how we uh, fling about loaded labels. I will concede it, Youssef, but at the same time the government believes that it can recoup at the minimum £500 million a year. Certainly a figure dwarfed by the overall NHS budget, but it's not a, it's not a pocket full of change. Uh, no, I think you're, you're absolutely right to point, I think, you're absolutely right to point out that it is, if we're talking about the, the entire NHS budget, it's over 100 billion. So this would amount to about 0.5% of that budget. And of course, um, where money should be recovered or recouped, uh, that should be the case. But this is really actually a diversion from the real issues. If you want to look at where money is being uh, wasted, where the NHS budget is being abused, then you need to really look at, for example, private financing of hospitals, where you have a situation where private companies, corporations, banks are actually making billions uh, in profit uh, from financing hospitals and from running them. So over 100 NHS hospitals were built for about uh, 11 billion pounds and the NHS is going to end up paying up to 80 billion pounds for those. So that's just one example of where there is true abuse of uh, taxpayer money. And if patients and the public sitting at home wondering where their money really is going. It's not actually going towards health tourists or foreigners or migrants. It's actually billions are being siphoned off to uh, private health care uh, and other private corporations. Uh, Mike, there will be plenty of people, in fact, yourself included, at nodding their heads whilst listening to Youssef there. You know, th th this is something of a diversion from other significant issues within the health service. However, Given the financial constraints placed upon the NHS at the moment, isn't there a point of principle here that it's right to see the government standing up and, and trying to ensure that those who should be paying for their health care are paying for their health care? Yes, absolutely. So if you think about health tourism, I'd just like to phrase it in two parts. There's paid health tourism and there's unpaid health tourism. So with the paid, it brings in tens of millions to um, our NHS, to our hospitals, um, but then also lots of money to our, our hotels and our restaurants. When people come over to come and use our NHS and pay a lot of money and help generate profit and expertise. And then there is the unpaid, which is what we're talking about here. And as was mentioned, the scale of the problem is about 500 million they think should be recovered per annum. And out of an NHS budget of um, 116 billion now, you're talking about less than 0.5%. To put that in relative scale to other things, you've got, for example, um, reports saying if we were to tidy up deep wound infections, that could save us 300 million a year. If we were to all go above current average for efficiency of space usage, that would save about a billion per year. So it is an issue, absolutely, and it's one of the suite of issues by which we tidy up our NHS. So it is right that the government does this. They're on the right path generally. What I'm concerned about is when I see at the bottom of your screen, you know, crackdown, and is a crackdown needed? No, a crackdown isn't needed. There isn't widespread abuse. The, the, the Daily Mail rhetoric of people ripping off our system is way overblown. Um, it's just one of various issues whereby we're improving the efficiency 
of the NHS, especially as we get into a more international world where we need to have more of these reciprocal arrangements for, for repayments so that we're not chasing individuals and, uh, and having all those kind of debt collection problems. Uh, on, that, on that point, Mike, I mean, are frontline healthcare professionals or even the admin professionals within an NHS trust, are they the best people to be determining who should be paying and indeed to then follow up, to chase up? We're not talking about perhaps bringing the bailiffs into the end of the hospital bed, but uh, clearly the, the scheme hasn't worked as well as intended. There needs to be a streamlining. Is it those who are responsible for identifying where bills should be paid. Does, does that need to be looked at again? Um, yes, that we, we need new levels of awareness because most, uh, well, about half of our no doctors and nurses um, don't, aren't fully aware of who should be charged and who not and also don't really think that it's their responsibility. You know, they're dealing with stress every day from, you know, um, saving people's lives and mental health issues and, and all the trauma around that and they're under huge pressure themselves. Should they be the ones to be playing policemen? No. But there should probably be facilities within each hospital that does check up on these kind of things. And as we saw from the report, there are some hospitals that do better than others at this. Some completely don't, and others are very good at it. So rather than talking about crackdowns, we just need to say, OK, let's take the hospitals that are doing well. What are their tips and tricks for, you know, identifying who's entitled to the free care and who's not? I mean, that, that's the major thing. It's the identification process. And I think over the years, we will get there. Uh, Yusuf, are, are we perhaps missing a, a trick here? I mean, Mike mentioned, you know, the potential benefits that emerge from health tourism, the profits that we, we could be making and putting back into the health service. I mean, as you made clear, there is plenty of anecdotal and empirical evidence uh, that the NHS is suffering from, from a lack of funding. Should we be, in fact, encouraging health tourism in a rather greater way than we've been doing in the past to try and attempt to plug some of the black holes that clearly exist? Um, well, with um, legitimate health tourism, then you're certainly seeing uh, well-off or affluent uh, visitors coming to particularly world-class centres in London, for example, and hospitals are actually making tens of millions uh, in income from, from those visitors who are legitimately coming to pay. And uh, as has just been pointed out, obviously there are wider benefits to the health economy. But again, this is really a diversion. The fact that we're having this debate is a diversion from the real issues where you're seeing uh, billions of pounds being siphoned to outsourcing uh, of contracts where private companies are being paid uh, often for procedures, operations that aren't even being carried out. We're talking about millions of pounds for that alone. We're seeing uh, billions spent on PFI, private financing. We're seeing billions spent on the tendering of contracts, which are often going to now to private companies like Virgin and Serco and, and those other companies. And some of that is, is then, in terms of profits, being uh, relocated offshore. So uh, it's engaging in tax avoidance. So that's the real picture if you want to look at where billions of the NHS budget of hard-earned taxpayers' money is actually going. And remember, it's the same corporate and financial elite who caused the financial crash um, and why we now have uh, massive austerity, massive cuts uh, to the NHS and to public services. It wasn't actually migrants, foreigners or people on benefits who caused that crash. So that same uh, financial elite, and we're talking about banks such as RBS, HSBC, who now have controlling stakes in hospitals, in NHS hospitals, and they even own uh, uh, in some cases, hospitals, NHS hospitals outright. Um, we have to really look at that very hard. And we're on a road, a one-way road now, it seems, into the end game of privatising the NHS and converting it into a private health insurance system. Uh, Mike, I just want to get a very, very brief final thought from you. There will be plenty of people, again, watching this and, and nodding in agreement uh, with Yusuf's point that this is, this is a diversion. But check social media, check the, the inbox of, of many an NHS trust. It appears to be an issue that does resonate with the public, no matter the scale of it, a small problem or a large problem within the health service. I mean, how can you, as healthcare professionals, get the issues that Yusuf was just talking about back to the top of the agenda, when, when frankly, it does appear that some people at least are more concerned about the fact that people are gaming the system. Yeah, well, there will always be people that want to peddle the anti-immigrant line. So I think it's important to say this issue is being dealt with um, 
as the Department of Health said itself, you know, it may not meet its ambitious target, but it's making good progress. So if we just say we've got teams in all the hospitals that are entrusted in checking this um, and we're going to keep an eye on it, we can then shift focus to what Youssef was saying, some of the bigger issues that also hit lots of inboxes and concern, I would think, um, equal or, or maybe a larger proportion of the population. Because we do want to keep our NHS public, and a lot of the public are extremely concerned by a lot of the things that are happening by the back door, and uh, they should certainly be put on the table as well. Why isn't the government doing that? Mm. Uh, Mike Goldsworthy, Yusuf Okengehe, thank you both for joining us here on Sky News this, this afternoon.